fantastic service. Fantastic companies. Sock full of jizz. But it's not the consoles which are the bad part. Well, apart from maybe that one. That one was shocking. And it's not the games either, because there have been some absolute crackers on various Xbox consoles over the years. No, the reason I want Xbox gone from the gaming industry is because of the disastrous business practices committed by the creepy weirdos lurking just behind Xbox, Microsoft. Microsoft doesn't create good games, and that's because they don't create almost anything. They just throw money around and buy exclusive games or entire studios. I'll show you. Microsoft didn't make Halo. Bungie first showed Halo off at a Macworld event, where it was being designed for Apple computers before Microsoft stepped in with a truck full of cash. Microsoft didn't make Fable. The first game in that series was released two years before Microsoft came along and bought out Lionhead, who made the Fable games. Sea of Thieves is made by Rare, who Microsoft famously bought out in the early 2000s for a whopping $375 million, after Rare had made some of the best games for the Nintendo 64. Hilariously, after the buyout, many key staff members took the money and quit. This is why, under Microsoft, Rare have made almost nothing of worth for almost 20 years. Microsoft had to shell out two and a half billion dollars just to pretend to all the kids that they created Minecraft. Gears of War was made by the same people that make Fortnite and Unreal Tournament, which is Epic Games. Microsoft owns the name Gears of War, but those first games that actually made the series famous were by Epic. And this is probably why the later games suck massive balls. We've had Microsoft buying out Bethesda, so now they can pretend they created Doom, Skyrim and Fallout. And we're about to see Microsoft buying out Activision Blizzard. So Call of Duty and World of Warcraft are in their command now. But looking at the state of World of Warcraft, they're fucking welcome to it. They did make Crackdown, or did they? Not that it matters now, because even that shit now. The Forza titles are good though, so in just over 20 years, they've managed to make one decent series of games games without having to buy an existing studio or IP. One series in 20 years. Compare that to even Nintendo or Sony and it's frankly shocking that Microsoft have created almost nothing. Pretty much everything they have is a result of them opening their wallet rather than having the ability to actually make something themselves. Do you know what else is 20 years long? The entirety of Sega's home console business. In 1983, Sega released their first ever home console, and 20 years later, Sega had to bail out of the console business to avoid going bankrupt. Here's just a sample of what Sega managed by themselves in the same time frame as Microsoft. <laughs> Twenty years, one series, fucking pricks. I do have a theory on why Microsoft's gaming output is so hopelessly shit and it's down to piss poor management at the company. And before I start waving my ideas about, let's look at the facts that we know for sure. The big turd is clearly Halo Infinite. This is the game that Microsoft proudly slapped all over the Series X retail packaging. They spent six years and hundreds of millions of dollars developing the game, but when it was released, it was utter dog shit. A large reason for this is because unlike Nintendo and Sony, Microsoft upper management doesn't understand the process of games development. You need a good team to create a good product, but if you just hire temporary staff on 18 month contracts, obviously your game is gonna suck. But that's what happened with Halo. 
Microsoft were getting people in for just 18 months and then kicking them out after the contracts finished, only to replace them with new temporary workers for another 18 months. And according to reliable sources, it wasn't just a few staff members, most of the Halo development team was temporary workers. Imagine being a programmer on that. Imagine joining a project midway through development and having to pick up coding that you didn't write in the first place. How does that even make sense? It makes no fucking sense at all. Coders are just like artists. They have their own way of writing code. It's normally different to other people. So with all these different people doing the same job on one project, no wonder Halo Infinite was just spaghetti code that was utterly broken. This is also why two thirds of the game's content had to be cut. You can't just run game studios like this. This is also why we saw reports of Microsoft management being called incompetent by former staff. But mismanagement goes further than just flagship console titles being handled like shit stained underwear. No, Xbox upper management also don't talk to each other, make their business decisions up as they go along, and then fail to share these brain farts with each other. Take for instance when Microsoft bought Activision, but then committed to continuing to bring Call of Duty games to PlayStation. This was about two years after buying out Bethesda Studios, but deciding to not allow future games like Starfield and Elder Scrolls 6 to come to PlayStation consoles. Now look, it's fine for Microsoft to pick and choose which of the titles they own to release on whichever platform. They own the games, can release them wherever they want. But where this all falls apart is when Microsoft management don't bother or even think to talk to each other on the matter. We saw in the recent FCC Microsoft leak that Peter Hins from Bethesda was very pissed off that it was one rule for Bethesda and another rule for Activision. But even more pissed off is that no one in Microsoft management bothered to talk to Bethesda about this, especially because Todd Howard was due to attend a gaming convention and would more than likely be quizzed by a gaming journalist about why there was this two-tier release system. Xbox makes decisions, doesn't tell Bethesda, and then expects Todd Howard to clear the mess up afterwards. I'm a unitard! This is absolutely piss poor management, and it just seems like there is no group decision making. It's just Phil Spencer making it up as he goes along. But I don't think this idea of just freeballing how to run the Xbox gaming business is just down to Phil. Examples of why I think this is a Microsoft problem rather than an Xbox problem can be seen as far back as summer 2013 and the train wreck that was the Xbox One reveal. When the Xbox One was revealed, everyone hated it. The price was too much, no one wanted the Kinect, the DRM was insane, and the TV functions were about as welcome as Russell Brand in an all-girls school. I'm inclined to agree with you, dodgy kebab. But we can draw parallels to Sony's reveal for the PS3. The price was very high, the Blu-ray drive seemed uncalled for, and the games didn't look very good, and the controller looked really dated. But the difference between what Sony did and what Microsoft did is huge. Despite the backlash, Sony had faith in their product and stuck with it. Eventually, we saw why the Blu-ray drive was a good idea. Months in, I love it. The controller wasn't the end of the world, and soon enough, world-class titles got people to buy the console. Microsoft, however, saw the backlash against the Xbox One and completely shit their pants. Now look, I didn't want a digital DRM box with Kinect, but Microsoft didn't even attempt to sell their vision. Why did they do all these things if they didn't believe in any of it? They didn't even try to show the benefits of their ideas. Because even though it wasn't for me, I'm sure there would have been other people that would have liked the idea of take your games anywhere and being able to share your digital library. But Microsoft didn't have the same level of faith in their product as what Sony did, and they just pivot immediately. They stripped out all of the features that made it different to Sony's machine, and then just ended up releasing a lower powered PS4 with worse games. So what was the point?
The last section of this video is going to be dedicated to the complete car crash that is Xbox Game Pass. Now, you might like Game Pass and think it's great, but lots of people like Spotify, but that company has never once made a profit. I know that sounds impossible, but look it up for yourself. Spotify is only kept afloat because of capital investors, not because it's a business that actually makes money. You might feverishly point to a news story where Microsoft said Game Pass is now profitable because yes, I've read those news stories too, but this is one of those times that it's so obviously fake news. And instead of doing actual research, games journalists once again just print Microsoft PR and claim it's news. Because I'll prove to you right now that Game Pass is just a complete financial black hole. Strong stuff, but he's right. So I'm going to be super generous to Microsoft and do the maths using hypothetical best case scenario. So first of all, right now, Game Pass has about 30 million users, okay? Let's pretend that none of those users are unsubscribing and the number is solid. Next, let's pretend that each of those 30 million users is paying the most expensive ultimate plan rate, which is $17 a month, and that they pay every month without missing a single payment. We are going to say that no one is buying the lower tier plans and no one is getting the $1 trial versions. No one is paying for three months at a time and no one is buying Game Pass keys online at discount rate. Let's pretend that each of the 30 million users are paying $17 a month for Game Pass Ultimate one month at a time. This would generate Microsoft $510 million a month, which works out to $6.1 billion a year. Okay, so it's an income of $6.1 billion a year. Just the cost of acquiring Bethesda and Activision with the intent of having their games like Starfield and Call of Duty as day one Game Pass releases is $76.5 billion dollars that's 76.5 billion dollars to buy out Bethesda and Activision even in my best case scenario this would take Microsoft 12 and a half years to recoup the cost of just those two buyouts so don't even try to tell me that Game Pass is making a profit because it's definitely not and the costs of the buyouts are far from being the only outgoings. Thanks to the FTC Microsoft leak, we can see Microsoft's own estimates of the cost of bringing other third-party games to Game Pass. Microsoft would have to pay out around $35 million to bring LEGO Star Wars to Game Pass, 50 million for Gotham Knights, 12 million per month for Grand Theft Auto 5, 12 million a month. Mortal Kombat would cost $250 million to get on the service. But the costs don't end here either because Microsoft has gone all in with Game Pass. The money that Game Pass isn't making has to pay for most of the first party games development costs as well. Because if you have Game Pass, you get every single first party game on day one. So with all those people not buying games at retail or digitally, Game Pass has to cover the cost of actually making the titles too. But you might be thinking that maybe Microsoft still sell a lot of games at retail or digital. Nope, 70% of Xbox owners use the Game Pass service. So that leaves just 30% of the user base to pick up the slack for the money that is simply not being made with Game Pass. You're probably thinking at this point, why is this bad for me, the user? Why is it bad that Microsoft is losing money hand over fist on Game Pass? I'm getting a great deal, right? Why should I care that this is a completely unworkable system? Well, technically, you don't have to worry because thankfully Microsoft has been completely steamrolled in sales by both Sony and Nintendo. But let's look at a theoretical situation in which Xbox is the industry leader and Game Pass is to video games as to what Spotify is to music. Long story short, it would crush the games industry. 
For Game Pass to actually make a profit, either the cost to the user needs to skyrocket or the cost to Microsoft needs to come crashing down. We've seen how much artists earn from Spotify and it's fuck all. With Microsoft being the industry leader, they could dictate how much they're willing to pay for games and would cut everyone's profits to the bone. So say goodbye to those high budget AAA games and say hello to generic Unity Store Call of Duty clone number 420. And you won't see surprising indie games anymore because now Microsoft can see what types of games on the service are popular. They are using this purchasing budget to keep filling the service with games that people are most likely to play. And because people have got used to not buying games outside of Game Pass, full price releases outside of EA Sports and Grand Theft Auto pretty much dried up. Much like how you don't buy music anymore, now it's so easy to stream from Spotify. So like how already 70% of Halo Infinite players got the game via Game Pass and not a full price release. There is no scenario in which Game Pass creates a future for gaming which is better than what we currently have. And this is all the reasons why I want Box Off gone from the gaming industry. They are just a toxic, awful company that needs to go. アバ。ビデオにコメントを残していいね。ボタンを押し、友達に勧めてから